As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. PM Show Weekend Edition on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Once again, the star of our show, Fred Dreyer. Thank you so much. I'm just going to, before I segue into pro football. Yeah, we got to talk some football. We, uh, before you I, played football before, in the past, no, didn't I you? Didn't. I didn't. Never, that, was, that was a lie. Uh, uh, before I segue into it, I just want to say something in capping of this, uh, this uh, GOP thing. And I'm going to get off, say it and get off on it. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the tables turned for me when I realized that uh, uh, Mitt Romney's uh, number one advisor that was given to him by the GOP was Ed Gillespie. Oh, my brother. Now, <laughs> now uh, this guy has carried out every, every policy. He has, he has dumped every bit of, of, of his, his career. I don't know what he, what, he, what he stands for. But this guy is the guy that tells Mitt Romney, don't, don't, don't say anything about that. Right. Whatever, you, whatever you do, He's don't say that. He's the campaign guy. Don't do that. Him. Don't say that. Don't sit there. Don't stand there. Don't look that way. Wave. Talk about jobs. He Remember the narrative. The tone. Jobs, 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 jobs. And it was jobs, jobs, jobs narrative that killed Mitt, Mitt, Mitt. Yeah, okay. And America's hope to get rid of this jackass that's in the, in the White House. Because nobody wants jobs. They want just their unemployment. And let me give you an Ed Gillespie story from uh, the... Uh, uh, the Ronald Reagan campaign. Ed Gillespie was the original uh, organizer of uh, Ronald Reagan's campaign to run for president. And Michael Reagan, the eldest son of uh, Ronald Reagan, was scheduled to go and talk to a young uh, Republicans uh, group. Flew out there when he uh, arrived off the plane. People from the campaign got him and says, "You're not going to address the group. We don't. You're not going. We don't want you to address." The and Michael Reagan flew all the way across the country to be there and was not allowed to address the group. And he came back. He told his dad what had happened. He said, "You know, you got to watch this guy." Ed Gillespie, I think he's not giving the straight story. And about three weeks later, four weeks later, Ronald Reagan called his son. It's in Michael Reagan's book. Called him in and said, uh, I want you to read this note. And it was a note of, uh, of change in the Ronald Reagan campaign that they were going to remove Ed Gillespie. And so Michael Reagan said, well, that's great, Dad. And, and uh, Ronald Reagan said, I wanted you to be the first to read it because you're the one that brought this to my attention. And Ed Gillespie resurfaces and runs this campaign with uh, Mitt Romney. This is, it's ridiculous. No wonder the Republicans lost. Well, well remember, I, I said this, uh, you know, in our interview, and, and I'll, you know, just go take a look at it again. You know, this is, this is the, uh, the party that gave us George Herbert Walker Bush, Bob Dole, T-Rex, McCain, and Mitt as presidential candidates. How about that? How about that infield? You know, this is, I've got you know, to, to me, down. there isn't one individual in here that's an individual. You're out of control. i got to calm you down a little bit. No, I, well, it, it, this this is just the problem that's going on. You know, going at, on. At, at what point in time? I don't think I'm, I'm yelling at our listeners. I think there's a lot of people out there going, yeah, that's right. I haven't heard that before. That's pretty good. All right. We're going to segue. If I could just kind of calm you down a little bit Can here. you take me back into the, the Pro, Pro, Bowl? Bowl, Pro Bowl environment? Yeah. Now, you were in Hawaii at the Pro Bowl. Yeah. And uh, I was watching that Pro Bowl. People, when they tackle, they just grab the quarterback and the action just stops. No, they don't it's, really, it's no, not a really, no, should they play that finished. game or anything? The sports, the sports finished. It is finished? No more Pro yeah. Bowl you don't think is done? Yeah, yeah, I think they had to dump it. Really, and it's a shame because the people and the people there, yeah. you know, uh, you know, that's the only really huge sporting event they have, other than the Hawaii football and uh, you know, girls uh, lacrosse or something. But that's it. They don't have a lot of stuff going on over there. Girls lacrosse. Yeah, I, re I would rather watch girls lacrosse. I used to go to, to Ojai Valley High School and, and watch my daughter play uh, soccer. I mean, that was as entertaining for me as anything. Of course, you know, I had a, a personal interest in it. But, but this sport, this pro football sport, is, is finished. And and one of the things, the pro that, ball, you're talking about, yeah. Well, that's finished. Yeah. But here's the other thing that. What that, about the actual game? The Super Bowl. Here's coming the up. other thing is that is true. And it's coming like a tidal wave, and they better do something about it. They're about ready 
to start making rules and regulations to modify this sport to try and get rid of concussions. Oh, the and president we, himself and, said this. Too rough of a sport. You got to tell him to shut up and mind his own business. Now the president has not only ruined your health care, ruined ruined America's middle class, has destroyed the Constitution, and now he's sticking his nose into pro football. We don't need him or anybody else or Joe Biden or, or Buffalo Mom or anybody else to start commenting on pro football. We've got a hand and we'll fix our own problems. So what they should do is start having the conversation, and this is one of the things I talked about when I was over in Hawaii with a bunch of guys, and what is the fact that they've stopped teaching tackling in college 20 years ago. The people coming out of college into pro football have no idea what a tackling dummy is. You've said this they to don't me know many what times. a fundamental breakdown is in order to gather yourself to confront the ball carrier. So when they get to pro football, it's not taught there either. So what you're seeing right now is 25 to 27 years, a quarter of a, of, of a, of a century right. of non-coaching of the tackling a, a fundamental. Yeah. If you don't have an understanding how to tackle how a defender engages a ball carrier, whether it's a receiver or a running back, whether it's at the line of scrimmage or in midfield or down the field, if you don't have the integrity you lose the sport. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I'm hearing what the you're difference saying. is what holds the get the game together is the is the understanding of a technique. It's a physical sport. It's a dangerous sport. The irresponsibility to allow these people to run recklessly around the field, beating each other's heads in, literally, is 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 this the biggest scandal. I can I can't I can't tell you how angry I'm about it. They've destroyed the sport. They've destroyed the integrity of it. If you don't have a fundamental skill I to agree. learn how to break down and tackle, like I was taught and the people before me was taught, why suddenly, if you take a look now, the people who are suffering from concussions 